push, 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 push. St Mary's in Manchester is one of the busiest maternity hospitals in the northwest. There's two ladies that um, intensive HDU care is room nine and ten, so they can easily be doubled up. Over half of all expectant mums seen here are classified as high risk. It's the midwife's job to manage this rising number of complicated pregnancies and challenging births. Oh. Hello, trouble. Triage unit midwife, Heather Massey speaking. Years ago, women with very serious conditions were told you'll never be able to have a baby and they were advised not to have a baby. But now, the medical management of these women are so much better. And if they're well enough to get pregnant, we support them through that pregnancy. Come on, mister. I would like some crying, please. Oh, what are we doing here? Good cry is good. It's a massive challenge to get them through pregnancy. Hello, it's Susan, diabetic midwife. Some women uh, put their own health at risk to achieve that dream of having a baby. So a huge amount of time and resources are spent looking after women who are very complex. We've probably got about 32 ladies coming this afternoon. Hi, Lydia. Hello. Hello, darling. <laughs> Susan is a specialist midwife who works closely with colleague Greta to support pregnant women with diabetes. We've seen a huge increase in pregnant women with diabetes, specifically type 2 diabetes. And that's because obesity is an epidemic in the UK and a consequence of obesity is diabetes. So we've got really mad busy clinics. Today is March. Yeah, you haven't had a scan today, no? Yes, I have. Have you? Yes. And Definitely won't. We'll no. never be without a job. <laughs> I blame that book for my pregnancy. Fifty Shades of Grey, basically, has like put me here. When you mentioned the name Carla, you just got to laugh because you just get the picture of a very bubbly, happy girl. Have you read Fifty Shades of Grey? No. Have you not read it? Uh, but by your wife? If you write for the name, then I'll, I'll see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write the name down for you. Thank you. You just never forget Carla. Actually, when she came through the door this time, just straight away, oh my goodness. Carla is in the last two weeks of her pregnancy with her third baby. She has type 2 diabetes and needs to attend a clinic every two weeks for a checkup. You look lovely today. Oh, thank you. I thought I'd get dolled up considering I'm coming here. Uh, have you got a urine sample for me? I haven't, not yet. I'm you... ready to rock though, for one. Well, you know where the bathroom is, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pregnant woman, I know where every bathroom is. <laughs> The diabetes clinic has seen its numbers double in the last 10 years. With having diabetes, the risks of hypertension are higher, the risks of miscarriage is higher, the risks of congenital abnormalities yeah. is, you know, five, sixfold. And so we're seeing a lot of these ladies. And the whole pregnancy is quite intense and very time consuming. That's not very big, is it? <laughs> Look at that. I don't think where you've got <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, Carl. I told you I was going to get to 38 weeks. You said that right at the beginning. I did, didn't I? I said you were like, Stop I'll take it as death as down. Yes. Stop worrying, I'll be fine. <laughs> Carla's diabetes means her baby is five times more Thank at risk you. of being stillborn. Greta's been telling me that, how oh, brilliant your yeah. blood sugars have been over the last I couple know. of weeks. I couldn't get them any perfect. Unbelievable so, at the minute. That's all that hard work you've put in, honestly. It is. We all have done, haven't we? We've all done it. <laughs> <laughs> we need uh, Carla's blood sugars absolutely perfect in these last few days uh, of her pregnancy. And it's not, we're at the end, so we're okay now, can relax. Not until that baby literally is delivered in the mother's arms can we relax. It's what I have to do every morning. This is slow release insulin. I inject in my stomach because I've had two C-sections and I don't feel a dicky doo in there. <laughs> 
what you gotta understand is is that I weighed um I weighed a lot yeah um I was probably about near enough 23 24 stone um so the doctor did turn around to me and say either lose weight calorie or die so I lost a lot of weight um and it, you know it was it was all about pop for me as soon as I cut that out the weight just kind of started like plummeting down Carla lost 10 stone in an attempt to control her diabetes. Now she needs to manage it even more carefully for the health of her baby. Now I've got to take this one. Yet again in the belly. Diabetes can be a huge responsibility on a woman and we really empathise. But with Carla, she has the added burden really that her baby has got some problems that will need attention and specialist care afterwards. This is her at 22 weeks. Um, if you look here at the bottom, um, there was like a lump there at the bottom in between the legs. That's actually the exomphalus that's poking through. Carla's baby has an exomphalus, a rare condition that affects around one in 5,000 babies. A weakness in the abdominal wall means that some of her baby's internal organs have developed outside the body. I was terribly, terribly shocked at the time when they told me. I was, I was, um, I just, I didn't know what to do. The baby will have surgery soon after she is born. But the size and seriousness of the condition will only be known at birth. It breaks me inside to even see this little thing. And I'm just praying that one day I'll wake up and there she's fast asleep and all well. As a mother myself and as a woman, your heart goes out to her because nobody wants to hear those words that your baby has something wrong. Uh, but I see my role as a midwife uh, who's there as an advocate and a support for women. And as a team, we hope to carry Carla through this pregnancy so that she's emotionally stable and able to cope with what's to come once the baby's delivered. I'm prepared for the worst. No matter what's wrong with her, I don't care. I'm gonna cuddle her. I so much just wanna give her a cuddle. Midwife Heather Massey speaking, can I help you? Oh, hi, Heather Are you right? is one of the large team of midwives working on the main delivery unit. And what is your hospital number? Today, she is in charge of triage, offering 24 hour emergency assessment and advice to pregnant women. Transfusion on the phone. Okay. There's two ladies coming in as well. We have to be ready for anything. We're seeing more and more ladies with complex medical needs, ladies with conditions that sometimes I've never heard of and I've been a midwife and a nurse for a very long time. Your baby moving okay? You just hope that you're not gonna find anything that you can't cope with. Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie, my name's Heather. I'm gonna take you through to one of the rooms, okay? See if we can get you out of this wheelchair. I'm sure some porter would tell me the correct way to push a chair. Are you alright to just pop on the bed for me? Yeah. 23-year-old okay. Steph is seven months pregnant. How are you feeling now? Still out of breath. Still, still out of breath. And you've still got the chest pain. Right. She's been rushed into hospital by her husband, Dan. So when did this start, the breathlessness? Yesterday, I collapsed in Tesco's. Right. And then, since then, I've been having real tight chest right. breathlessness and then shot stabbing pains. Uh, but I'm just going to do some observations and check that your baby's yeah. not been affected by your breathlessness. Okay, okay is that all right? Yeah. Steph has a complex congenital heart condition that was only discovered after getting pregnant. My baby sounds fine, but obviously we just need to make sure that baby's happy with what's been happening with you. Okay, yeah. then I'm going to get a doctor to come and see you. I have symptoms which I've had on and off all my life, but I didn't realise that every time I have them, there's a chance that it could be fatal that time. 
She is a complicated case. Women with a cardiac condition, obviously the, the body um, is put under extra pressure by the pregnancy and as the pregnancy grows, the heart is put under more pressure. The danger for Steph is that her heart and lungs may not cope with the strain of the pregnancy. And they were very clear at the beginning of what we were risking, well, what I was risking. We spent three years trying for him, so we wanted this child so much. We wanted to give him a chance, so. She's trying to get as far in the pregnancy as she can, no matter what happens to her. She wants him to have the strongest chance. <laughs> After a night of observation, Steph's yeah. symptoms have settled and she's back home in North Wales. When I found out about my heart condition, they sat me down and explained that they couldn't guarantee the pregnancy, they couldn't guarantee that I'd come out of it. And that gobsmacked me at that point. <laughs> Despite all signs that the baby was healthy, the medical team gave Steph the option of a termination for the sake of her own health. To me, there wasn't a choice already. I, I knew he was there and that was it. From very young, I dreamt about having family of my own and I always saw children as my main goal in life. Yes, I'm living, but so is he. It is her choice. Um, yeah, I'm very worried, very scared for her. I'm scared for them both even if that means at the risk of my own life, I will try and protect him, because that's what a mum does. She is brave and full of hope. I could never call anybody stupid um, for having that desire. People will always take a risk, won't they? They've been dealt a bad lot of cards, really, and it could have major consequences, but she obviously has the need to have a baby. It's an instinct in a woman, isn't it? To be a mum. Midwives in the specialist antenatal clinics at St Mary's in Manchester support over 2,000 pregnant women every year with a wide range of medical conditions. That's great. Very good. So I'll get one of the doctors in to come and review you and then they can decide when we need to do the next scan. Midwife Charlotte works closely with the doctors to offer support every step of the way. We do see a lot more high-risk women. So we have to be a lot more knowledgeable from a medical side rather than a midwifery and obstetric side as well. Well, at least we've got a parking spot today. Makes a change. Sophie and Prince are expecting their first baby in eight weeks' time. We were pretty certain that we were having a girl because at one, any bits. at one point she opened her legs as well and they said, oh yes, we're pretty sure she's a girl, so. I don't know, I think I always wanted a girl more because I feel they're easy to manage. <laughs> How wrong am I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our concern at the moment was obviously because I've got the condition achondroplasia, we didn't know how I'd carry the baby. And so it's all a learning curve with it being our first pregnancy of how the whole experience will be, but then also we, we're not sure if she's going to have the same condition as I've got, so that's going to be a whole another learning curve. Sophie has a rare genetic disorder that affects the growth of her bones and causes the most common form of short-limb dwarfism. Which I know I've just, okay. I've just left with everything. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, it's all right. You've got a whole lot there carrying on. <laughs> On the couch, we'll have a little baby's heartbeat. Is that low enough for you now? You're yeah. Right. So there's the top of your uterus now. So no wonder you're feeling that, that yeah. hardness right under your ribs, because yeah. the top of your uterus is right up there now. Yeah. Sophie is actually the, the first lady with achondroplasia that I've looked after in pregnancy. So it's a new experience. But we're not looking 
at Sophie as someone with achondroplasia. She's a pregnant woman who's come to us for care and that's, I think that's the most important thing. It's because she's a woman having her first baby, having her first pregnancy. But it's nice to hear this because then you know that she's all right and everything's... It's reassuring, isn't it? Yeah. So your toes pointed, so it's hips forward so the ball comes in, push it back as far as you can, back in again, out, in, out, in, out, <laughs> shake it all about. Yeah. I've been married just over four years now. Having a family was bo on both of our list of things to do. Come on, big push. <laughs> well, I always wanted to be a dad. For me, that, that, that's going to be the most amazing feeling in the world. Finding the right person to do it was, I think, half the struggle. <laughs> Sophie is a Paralympic athlete and came fifth in shot put and discus at Beijing. The main hope was to make it to London 2012. The competition was really difficult and unfortunately we didn't get selected. So um, even though the disappointment was, was so big at the time, we thought, Let's try for a family thing. Good. OK. Obviously, you don't know if you're going to be gifted with a child. And I wasn't too sure if my disability would make that decision for me in any way. But then once I did become pregnant, you start to think then of if there's going to be any complications with me carrying a baby and with the fact there would be a 50-50 chance with us of passing on yeah. dwarfism to her. I hope she doesn't decide to come out now. <laughs> Can you feel it twitching? Sophie's baby's limbs are being monitored for signs of a slowdown in growth. But it won't be until her next scan that Sophie will finally know if her baby has achondroplasia. It's all just a waiting game now, really. Not that I'll love her any less and not that she'll mean any less to us. I'll just worry that bit more about how she's going to cope in life. It must be a really big decision for, for a couple, knowing that they've got a genetic condition, that when they do plan to have children, there's that risk there that that genetic condition is passed on. I think in this occasion it would be wise if we read the instructions before ah, putting it in don't the car. Worry. There you go, done it. How do you get it off? <laughs> Sophie's worried that that could be potentially the case, and until she's seen the scan, it's been confirmed one way or another, she won't be able to sort of get past that until she knows for sure. Feels like the middle of the night, doesn't it? Jeannie's only just gone to bed over the road as well. <laughs> Carla has reached the end of her pregnancy and due to having had two previous C-sections, she's having planned surgery to deliver her baby. I'm sure the way she's kicking this morning, she's coming out kicking and screaming. Carla's baby will have an operation soon after she is born. I think it's come round pretty quick, you know. <laughs> yeah, you think it's come round pretty quick. <laughs> come on, kid. Carla's 20-year-old daughter, Terry, will be supporting her throughout. It's like our... Uh... Work has got her to this point, and it's about delivery now. And as a midwife, you want to almost give her some strength to get through the other side. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm finally right? got here. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my God. Are you OK? Yeah, yeah. I'd... Look a bit tired if you're not slept <laughs> <anywhere>. No. <laughs> oh. You know what that's another way for? You look like rubbish. No, no. <laughs> you just look tired, and it's expected. <laughs> Can I give you a big hug? Because I'm going to be busy yeah. and I won't see you going in there. Oh, come here. Thank you so much. I don't know how I would be in her situation. You can't wait. You never forget there's a huge journey for Carla, the other side of delivery, and uh, you really do feel for her and you hope this little girl of hers uh, has got the same character and strength and um, attitude that Carla has that will bring her through this difficult few days of her life. How are you feeling? 
Are you worried about anything? Yeah, I'm worried about you, being my birthing partner in this traumatic situation. And then I'm worried about baby. I'm scared to see her, as well as, like, really excited, because I'm going to feel when I see her. Well, I can't change my mind now, can I? <laughs> Only after Carla's baby is born will surgeons know the full extent of her health problems. <laughs> oh, God. This is a bit... My mum's one of those people that I'll put up her front She'll act as strong as anything, but she's fragile. <laughs> I think she's scared if anything happens, like anything bad happens to baby, because I don't think she'd be able to handle it. All right, Carla. Um, Pediatrician's here? Yes, yes. OK. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you more. Okay. That's the water's gone. And this is the pushing on the chest. Okay, here she comes. Okay. Hello there, little one. Okay, nice and gently. Hello. Oh, she's beautiful. How are you? Oh, look at you. She's gorgeous, Carla. Well done. Carla, Carla. Quick look, quick look. Oh, Okay. I did the exam for the slope. Do you know that baby? I can't see it that much. Yeah. But let's just take the next step. She's feeling overwhelmed now. I can't wait to see her again. Carla's daughter, Bella, is taken to intensive care for the paediatricians to assess the seriousness of her abdominal defect. The, the defect itself is only three or four centimetres, yeah. but the actual amounts to out there is quite a lot out, and actually the maximum damage to the sac there. The zonclus out is nearer to 10 um, at this maximum point, a small bowel in there. Getting everything back uh, in one go is um, sometimes impossible. I think we'll have to wait and see um, uh, when we're down to this, how it looks and how everything goes back. It's a reality check. You know, she's carried Bella all these months um, and this is it. Um, she's got to get through surgery and um, Carla will be so anxious that things go well. Okay, yeah. It's been three weeks since Steph's blackout, and the team at the hospital's cardiac clinic have been running tests to discover the reason why. Baby been moving around okay? Yeah. Yeah. Any more sort of dizzy spells? They're getting a bit more frequent, but I don't know if that's because I'm getting to the end of the pregnancy that is putting a bit more strain yeah. on. Just have a seat on the couch, Alan, and I'll just have a feel of you. Feel like a bone there? Yeah. yeah. Spot on. <laughs> Midwives here work closely with the team from the Manchester Heart Centre, who support over 80 pregnant women a year with cardiac problems. Get these on, Stephanie. I need you to relax and be as still as you can for me, sweetheart. Okay. Yep. Ladies like Steph previously may never have even got to childbearing age. If that's the choice that they've made, then we're not there to say that they can't do it. We're there to say these are the risks, and they go into that knowing what the risks are. 
Have you got names planned and everything? Uh, yeah, his name's Aiden. Aiden. Yeah. People might argue that she's made the wrong decision or she's been selfish. I'm not in her shoes. I've never had a heart condition. I've not had the discussions with my husband about what would happen if that was the scenario. So I can't pass judgment. All I'm there to do as a midwife is to support her, irrespective of what the outcome might be. The strain of the pregnancy on Steph's heart is becoming a real concern for the team. Hello. Hi. Have you had any more blackouts? Not complete ones, have I? No. Not complete ones. Have you had some of the two? I've been getting yeah. black spots again. Do you remember the 24-hour ECG recording we did yeah. uh, last time you came? We've got we've got that now, and I've analysed that yesterday. Yeah. Um, that shows that there are periods where your heart slows down and yeah. the rhythm becomes very abnormal. What that means to you is that we would we would recommend that you have a pacemaker fitted for that. Okay. It's, it's a thing called complete heart block. Okay. Uh, and we need to do it now, really. Yeah. The, the intention, if you're happy with this, is that we'll admit you today okay. to the maternity wards um, and tomorrow afternoon I'll put a pacemaker in. Would it be better to induce me and just have him born first? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we need, we need rhythm safety for okay. you for whichever uh, mode of delivery, you know, comes. Okay. 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 Yeah. Complete heart block is dangerous because we know that some patients may die of this. We can't wait until the baby's born before we implant the pacemaker because if her heart was to stop, then potentially her life would be at risk and clearly then the baby's life would be at risk and that's not a risk that we're prepared to take. I'm surprised that I need to ring Mum. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I'm petrified now. Aiden, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? But I'd been a bit too lucky all the way through, to be fair. <sighs> I'm sorry, Daniel. You have to be sorry. Okay. It's not ideal having surgery in pregnancy, particularly surgery on the heart. Yeah, no problem. But she knows that she's got no option and it's something that she's really got to go through. And you just hope that it all goes well because potentially for her it's a one in a lifetime opportunity to be a mum. It's Susan at St Mary's. I was just ringing to see how her blood sugars are. She's not left a diary with you, has she? This is for a lot of ladies, what they've dreamed of since being a little girl. And that's what drives them at all odds and at the expense of their own health to have a pregnancy, to feel real like you're just like anybody else. But it's huge for us as a service that is under a, uh, a lot of pressure to deliver for women. There's a lot of expectation on us as midwives um, and we feel that day to day. No, this is alien to me, you know, I feel really, I get, I get anxious about here as well, do you know that? Here, let me. 24 hours after her caesarean section, Carla is visiting her baby daughter, Bella, in intensive care. Oh, my goodness. Isn't she tiny? Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, Carla. Isn't she beautiful? She is. Bella will have surgery today to try and repair the defect in her abdominal wall. It's got to be done. Um, yeah, I'm worried. <laughs> I don't really, you know, like want to have the operation, but she's got to, and that's the only way we can get her home. So, it's the last little bit, yeah. It's the last little bit for her. I just gotta let her go, haven't I? And just let them deal with it now. 
like I can't do this now. I don't want to say goodbye to her. I don't want to. I don't want to go down to theatre. I don't want to go in that room. I went in that room yesterday and it scared living daylights out of me just being in there for Terry, let alone, let alone her. It sounds awful, doesn't it? He really does sound so sounds terrible. She can only be so strong for so long. She's got me. I'll make sure she's all right. Right, good luck, beautiful, and do was proud. Any baby who needs an operation within one day of life is having a risky operation. The first thing we're going to do is make sure the bowel looks healthy through the membrane. Then we're gently going to try and reduce it, which means push it back inside her tummy. And if we fill her tummy up with lots and lots of bowel, it's much harder for her lungs to fill with air and for her to breathe on her own. And that can cause problems as well. So there are a lot of things to think about. It's panicking. You got no control over the situation. You gotta, leave, you gotta literally trust a complete stranger to make sure that you and your kids are all right. In theater, surgeons reach the critical part of the procedure. Okay, that was quite nice, so. Bella's bowel is carefully squeezed through the base of her umbilical cord and back inside her body. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's the sack. Did you do it? Yeah, all done. How are oh, you? Oh, all right. Um, she's doing fine. Um, everything's back inside where it should be. Um, tummy looks good. Tummy button looks good. Is it in any or an out here? It's um, a sort of half and half <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> I hope it'll be an innie, but we'll have to see what how she heals. <laughs> but it looks nice and neat at the moment. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay, when can I have a cuddle? Probably now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you should be able to pick okay, up very soon. <laughs> can you go cuddle my baby now? Yeah. <laughs> you go cuddle her. <laughs> oh my god! It's amazing, isn't it? How clever are they? I can't believe it. Come here. Hello. <laughs> oh my lord, you're so tiny. Hello. Hello, it's Mummy here. Ooh. So beautiful. This is the moment I've dreamt of. This is the moment that's kept me going. <laughs> this is like the kind of the moment that's drove me through all the way. It's so beautiful. I never want to let you go, do I? Oh, there she look is. at her, isn't she gorgeous? I know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with you. She's beautiful, absolutely <laughs> beautiful. We want a photograph on our wall, Bella, we do. I could sit here all day with you, you're nice and warm. I think we can learn a lot from how Carla <laughs> managed that pregnancy. She just stayed amazingly positive and um, just uh, really strong. And she believed in her baby. you didn't know that I had achondroplasia and you can't really tell from those pictures can you? No, not really. Sophie is seven months into her pregnancy and is having a scan today 
to find out if her baby has inherited her dwarfism. Mm. Then they finally said at about six months that he had achondroplasia and there was nothing that they could do about it and cross each bridge when it came to it sort of thing. But I bet that was a shock for you because you didn't know anything about it really. No, I didn't. Around one in 25,000 babies a year are born with this condition and Sophie was the first in her family to have it. My legs were extremely bowed, so we had to straighten the legs out. The operation was very painful and very traumatic and uh, left me in a wheelchair for about a year. And this is something that I am extremely worried that if she ha ever had to go through, if it was just a case of her having short arms and legs and having to deal with society being a bit cruel to you, you know, we'd teach her to be fine with dealing with that and make her into a strong person. It's the medical side of things that is the thing that's worrying me the most. I have that fear, knowing how difficult it has been at times to live with, that I've passed on this condition to her. I know it's come from me. And you go through those feelings of guilt thinking, was it selfish of me to have a child with this condition? Looking at it from another angle, if my parents had known about me and then decided, oh, because she's got achondroplasia, we don't want to have her, then I wouldn't even be here. So it's just all the emotions going on in your head. I need the toilet again. <laughs> Early in the pregnancy, Sophie and her husband decided against genetic testing because of the risk of miscarriage. Instead, they're relying on scans to chart the growth of their unborn baby. There is a 50% chance that Sophie could pass on dwarfism to her child. Now, she will finally know the outcome. All right. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, I was just looking at the scan before we came in, and uh, the head's grown as much as we have expected, and it's on the average line, as is the tummy. Um, and this measures the thigh bone, and what we can see there is that baby's legs are, haven't grown as much as we would have expected. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's actually shorter than we would expect. Um, so Okey okay. okay. So it's so looking pretty certain. It, it does look as though baby's got achondroplasia. Which right. Okay. wasn't what you were hoping for, was it? Well, no, but as long as she's healthy. Oh, seen the doctor already today? Yes. It's looking like she's definitely going to have achondroplasia. Um, so how do you feel about it all now? Um, all right, I have to go home and take it all in really. That's yeah, how I, that's, it. that's how I am. It's, you know, I discuss it with my husband and... And you know, everything's fine. You're really healthy in the pregnancy, which is really good. And you know that the baby's well. Exactly, that's the main thing. And you've got your date for cesarean, so yes. even better. Yes. So you've got a date to work to. Yes, counting down. I'd be lying to say I didn't have that tiny bit of hope, thinking, oh, maybe uh, her legs have grown a lot and she'll be absolutely fine and there'll be no problems. So still felt that little bit of disappointment, but that's a bit of a strong word. You, you, I still felt emotional and worried and all those things, but it takes you a while to take in that information. She's grown up with achondroplasia and she knows her daughter has to do that. So it's difficult. Um, and she just wants the reassurance that everything's going to be OK. And... Why should it be any different now? I mean, as long as she's still healthy, it doesn't really matter. She's dwarf or not. Listen, there's nothing you can do about your condition, dear. There's nothing that's no, I know. a problem for it. And I know 
but because you've done so well, even, even if we have to go through the hard times, you wouldn't be the same person if you didn't go through those things. You're right. So don't think about it as the worst thing in the world that could have happened. Think about it, this just may be the way she's meant to be because she has something greater in the world to do. She, she'll have been put here for a reason, to make a difference. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. So how how are you feeling yourself? Scared, to be fair. Very scared. The baby's very happy in there. So that's an ideal trace, that. Good, good. Eight months into her pregnancy, Steph is having surgery to fit a pacemaker to help control her abnormal and life-threatening heart rhythms. I think it's easier for me, more straightforward for me, because I'm not the one who's going to be sitting outside the theatre and making having that hour drag on for half a lifetime. <laughs> the main thing is staying strong for her. It's, it's what we chose as parents to do. We, she had the choice, we made the decision. And we have to live with the consequences. <laughs> it is a big deal that this pregnancy is occurring. There's a lot of complications. So, you know, there is a sense that Dan may feel a bit helpless. Probably even better when I'm going back that way. But it is emotional. I bet he's just, you know, a mix of emotions and he doesn't really know where he's at some of the time. But I think he's done really, really well. She means the world to me. Steph's turned my life around. I kind of got lost in my teenage years, and then when I met Steph, I kind of found the old me again. I'm a recovering alcoholic, and my life was going nowhere. And she's my rock, she's what keeps me strong. I, I don't know what I'd do without her. I, I, I don't even want to think about it. We're going to implant a permanent pacemaker for Stephanie through uh, one of the veins just under the left shoulder. Throughout the operation, the baby will be closely monitored by the maternity team. We've got mum um, on a tilt to make sure that blood supply to baby is good. Um, Catherine, the midwife, is monitoring baby with a CTG machine, and we're just sort of standing by in case there's a problem. Two pacing leads are fed through a vein directly into Steph's heart. Might feel a bit pushing top of the left shoulder, OK? OK. I've got the lower chamber lead in, so I've got the most important one in. Now we're after the uh, second one, if we can get that in. Yeah, there's been that many complications and things gone on. We have spoken, me and Steph, that it could all go wrong, and Steph told me what she wants me to do uh, if the worst happens. If the choice is between her and Aiden, then it's to be Aiden all the way. And I agree with her, but I don't want to lose my wife. I don't want to lose either of them. The two uh, pacing leads are in. I'm now trying to make a, a pocket for the pacemaker under the skin, and then we'll pop the pacemaker in and so on. Fingers crossed. Once the pacemaker is connected to the pacing leads, it will send electrical pulses directly to Steph's heart. Yeah, pacing well with a good computer. A little bit of pulling now. By stabilizing the heart, the team are giving Steph the best chance of surviving to the end of her pregnancy. Better than I expected. Happy? Yes. Very good. Right. Here we go. Hello. Hey, Ping. Okay, actually. Yeah, she's got to be back with her now. 
Yeah. We are now happier she has the pacemaker and it's working than we were previously going into labour without that because that would have been a very high risk situation. And that's why she's had all this input to make it as safe as we can possibly make it. There's no guarantees, um, but at least we can put everything in place to, you know, try and have a live baby and a live mum at the end of the day. It's uh, Mandy, I'm the midwife on the elective list today. Um, we've got um, a patient called um, Sophie Gay, she's got achondroplasia. Um, and so we, you know, we will need um, somebody there at delivery. The, I've been told that the baby has it as well. <laughs> You're asking me what you need. I'll give you the cameras. I've got a camera. Because of her condition and the small size of her pelvis, Sophie's only option for a safe delivery is a caesarean section. You come in for a section? Because she has achondroplasia, they have to be very careful uh, when they're doing the spinal anaesthetic um, because they need to make sure it's in the right place and make sure she is anaesthetised properly. Oh, it's racing a little bit. Mm. It has been since last night, has it? Yeah, what style? You do look amazing. Just ready to uh, meet her now and just hope the operation goes well and without too many complications. She's putting on the greatest face I've seen in a while, but I think she just wants the whole process to be done with. Oh. <laughs> it's just like sticking, wow. doesn't it? I wish you could go through this little bugger. <laughs> Is Women have it to do it. He will be going through it, trust <laughs> me. Now, lots of people. Big room. Everyone is needed, we're only good. I think the, the spinal, that was the thing she's sort of most apprehensive about because of her anatomy being a bit difficult, a bit more different. Hello. The struggling to get the spinal in is is on his third attempt mm -hmm. now. Um, so we're, we're just waiting to see what happens. You don't like to think that there could be complications and I'm just trying to stay positive because there's going to be a baby at the end of it. She's not impressed at being born. Oh, really? <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Oh, dear me. Oh, you know, right scream. Oh, that's a good sign. Uh -huh. It's not that bad. She's really gorgeous. She's beautiful. Yeah. Look at you. Oh. Is she photogenic like her midwife? Here's mummy. Look at you again. Oh dear. Oh dear. I, got, I just can't believe this is my baby. Mm, I'm yours. Oh, baby. <laughs> I can only go on my own experience by how I felt becoming a mum for the first time. It's just amazing. And you can never underestimate it, really. You smell nice. <laughs> I just feel really content and happy. All my problems have disappeared and nothing else really matters right now apart from our little family. Now she's here and 
we know she's got achondroplasia, it doesn't really matter at all because she's just so perfect to us and all those worries and everything just go out the window. If she has the sort of life that I've had and the opportunities that I've had, she'll be absolutely fine. I'll have to go down to his second favourite lady in the world. <laughs> I suppose if there's anybody you have to be second best to, it's your own daughter. Two weeks after having surgery to fit a pacemaker, Steph is almost full term and is being induced so her labour can be carefully managed. She wants to give birth naturally, so will be closely monitored to see how her heart copes with labour. I'm quite surprised we finally got here. Um, after all the worry all the way through, now doing something really natural and something that I've always wanted to do. The only time I'm going to feel completely relaxed is when Aiden's here, and I know that Aiden's fine and Steph's okay. okay. She's determined to have this baby naturally. Five hours after the induction process began, Steph is in established labour. So, how are you feeling? Great, I think. Oh. Uh, ask me in a couple of hours. Hi, oh, yeah, you're all right. I'm Jackie. I'll be yeah. looking after you tonight. I'm going to take you around to the delivery room. From now on, Midwife Jackie will manage Steph's labour in a high dependency so delivery room. <laughs> just putting the ECG electrodes just on so we can monitor Stephanie's heart rate throughout her labour. You know, we're just observing closely to make sure that there's no real abnormalities and if there is, just get the doctors in as soon as we can. So at the moment, your heart is beating a little bit on the fast side, sort of around 107. At the moment, there are no pace beats, so that's your heart doing all of its work at the moment. You got a contraction at the moment? Now your waters have gone. <laughs> okay, you felt that then, yeah? That's good. Do you feel like you need to push? Yeah. I'm trying not to, though. Yeah. To minimise the strain of labour on Steph's heart, Jackie needs her to hold off pushing for as long as possible. Got lots of pressure? Yeah. Well done. You fully. I'm ready. Yeah. Try and hold off just for a little bit longer. Just let baby's head come down because you've only got 30 minutes. You know, we don't want to put too much pressure on your heart. So that's why we only want to push for 30 minutes. So if we hold off until you can't hold off any longer. Steph has just half the normal time to try and deliver her baby naturally or the doctors will step in. Big deep breaths, big deep breaths, big deep breaths. Hopefully if she manages to hold off pushing, um, then we'll have a nice normal delivery rather than having to get the doctors involved. Do you have a baby soon? Hopefully, I can go back in. <laughs> right, how are you doing? All right, is it getting too much, Steph? Yeah, yeah, okay. Nice deep breaths. Nice deep breaths. Keep going. Put your bum on the bed. It's okay, it's okay. Well done, that's brilliant. I can see the top of your baby's head. That means you can push next time, yeah. Well done. Go on again. Come on, on again. Just relax your legs. Go on, that's fabulous pushing. Well done, well done. It's okay. Well done, that's brilliant. He won't be long now. It's a little push now, Steph. Blow, blow. Nearly here. Come on, a little push. There we go. Well done. Good. Oh, wow. That's it. 
There he is. Look there we go. There he is. There he is. Congratulations, There's your boy. darling. There's your boy. He's not breathing. It's There's okay. Your boy. We'll yeah. do in a minute. I'm just gonna have a little look at him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's, he's fine. okay. Don't he's, worry. He's, he's, come on, little man. Okay, Adam. He is. Okay. He's fine. Okay. Giving me a fright, you are. Yes. You're making me worried. I don't want anything to happen to you. I don't really know how it feels, to be honest. It's surreal, really. I've jumped about this for so many years, and yet it's hard to explain. Oh, and my dream come true. I'm just so pleased that everything worked out for them. All she ever wanted was to be a mum and she was prepared to go through it despite all the rest, but um, she did brilliantly. Oh, he's lovely stuff. Let me give him back to you, honey. Mm -hmm. Oh. Steph takes her baby home and we're on to the next one, the next challenge, the next patient that we have sleepless nights about. You pass it on to the next lady and say, do you know, there was very little hope for another baby and it did really well. So if there's, you know, if there is life, then there is always hope. Oh Bella, God. look at Mummy. Like a, ba, 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 a baby Belle. <laughs> She's giving big smiles. She, she did, didn't she? <laughs> yeah. it you know, all it. that yeah. hard work was worth thing? it for everybody. We'll do it again for them next time. For, yeah. <laughs> we'll go through it again. We'll do it again. Oh. <laughs> I do genuinely love you, ladies.